All right, your season has ended. It's off season time. What are you really doing to condition and get better? We're going to give you tips on things that you should be doing. What typically we see with athletes coming back in, some of the mistakes they've made, or two weeks prior to the new season, hey, I want to hurry up and get bigger, faster, stronger, speed, get ready to go. Two weeks, coach, go. Let's get me out. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's a process. So thanks for joining us. Episode 43 of the Strength of America podcast. If you're not already subscribed, do so right now. Hit the bell and let's go. Episode 43. podcast all right guys welcome back again episode 43 of the SOA podcast appreciate you being here with us um, getting some great feedback but one of the questions we're starting to hear from people are okay we're in the off season what should we do to get ready and understanding some of you go from sport to sport so your off season is real limited on what to do but we're thinking more about that athlete that actually has a period of time in between their seasons to get better so what are some of the things, Bobby, we would tell them first to do when you're trying to figure out what you should do with that? What are the, some of the things that we th- have them think about? Um, well, just when I'm thinking about having them come through an off season, I like to kind of get them in the, in the process of getting them back in the door, um, getting back in the routine of things, and then continue to make those steps forward. Um, generally, when I'm creating a program for kids in the weight room, I'm thinking more uh, 12-week cycle usually because they're going to another sport if they're in an off-season with me usually. Uh, but that first four weeks is going to be kind of like a foundation, reworking on some technique, on some movements, uh, building on some work capacity, getting some volume in. Um, and then from there, we're dipping back into some strength. And then and the following four weeks after that is some strength and power. I don't shift into a, a completely power focus cycle because my kids aren't strong enough to just shift only into power so we need to shift a little more strength Um, well i think you know one of the things that i always ask my athletes are as they finish their season what kind of goals did you have going into that season what were you wanting to accomplish uh did you obtain those or not and if not what were the things that you they were holding you back from getting there and i could tell you a lot of these kids especially if i'm talking football players they finished up their season Maybe they found out that more that 155 pound frame just wasn't enough to give them what they needed to get through that. So you know what? You've got your time to get ready. Are you ready for high school football? A big part of that is are you big and strong enough to handle the stress of that sport? Because if not, they're just getting pounded and injuries happen, things are going on. So that may be the first thing. The other thing is, are you as fast as you wanted to be? Well, no, I've got to work on that. Okay, well, that's fine. That's, again, checklist. But how many of them take that time to really assess where they are, where they want to go, do they reach it last year or not, and how do you help them get into place? And that's what that coach is about, is helping them to get there. But I know we've, we've had athletes in the past that, you know, time off, you see them, it's time to go in the season. What have you been doing for conditioning? Well, I went to CrossFit and I worked with that, or I went down to the gym and I was working out three days a week, and, well, it's fine, you were lifting weights, all that's great. Well, what were you really after? If you're just interested in, you know, conditioning and throw the ball to shape and all that's great for us in the CrossFit. We've got some, you know, great coaches, people I've worked with from there that do a great job. But again, if you're getting ready for basketball, you're getting ready for football, is that enough? Just doing those kind of workouts. And I can tell you, they don't focus on the speed, the quick foot reaction, movement, body control, uh, deceleration work. And again, preventing knees, base strength, you know, really lifting, building that size. General conditioning, you bet, it's great. But our yeah, athletes... Work capacity, it's great. Yeah, it's not about general conditioning. It's about specifically for what they need for that sport. And, and again, CrossFit is a sport. Yeah. So we got to remember at the end of the day, people are now starting to utilize um, the sport of CrossFit to get in shape just because people like the camaraderie aspect, oh, you yeah. know, some gym goers and some different things like that. But we got to remember it's not technically for basketball and things like that. Now, is is there a good time for that in the off season? Heck yeah, there is. 
uh, definitely in that foundation phase, that first phase we were talking about. Um, but I also get kids that, you know, they want to have some time away to themselves and all the high school kids go through a phase where they want to go to the commercial gym. You know, there's other kids there, other girls there, different things like that. They like to be just doing their own thing, doing what they like to do. And that that's a problem with all this stuff. You know, if we want to truly get better, we can't do the things we like to do. We have to do the things that we do not like to do. Um, but outside of that, um, you know, I get kids that come back from going to the gym and doing isolation stuff, building stuff. And again, that's fine for a certain period of time, but they come back to me and I've had kids literally do a vertical jump test. They jump up and they fall every time they go back to, they can't even land. They can't even stop their bodies anymore. Or you get them in a change of direction and they just keel over when they hit to make a change. So we we just have to realize that we got to be, there's a reason that we are there. We know what we're talking about. And sometimes these kids have to be reminded of this stuff. Um, but also outside of those aspects, I've learned greatly from my football coach that the, the biggest thing that they can be doing in this time outside of the, the quality training coming in for structure is just being around their teammates, doing good things, having that atmosphere. When they have that atmosphere, they're going to get way better than they are when they're just on their own. And that's something I tell some of these kids. I was like, trust me, you're going to have plenty of time in your life where you can be on your own going to the gym and you're yeah. going to greatly miss these moments where you have a team with you and partners with you pushing you. So, well, that's and how much harder is that? I mean, you're doing that workout by yourself too. And some of you are self-motivated, but we realize when you go in there, how many of are, how many are not, how many times you're working out that they're on their cell phone during that time. And that break between the bench press, they're on there and they realize it's been four or five minutes before their next set instead of getting three other exercises in. So the intensity is not there. So they work out with them. They can get that. Not but the structure. Yeah, you, you got to get your stuff. You get it done and out. It's like our football players. Talk about the spring. One of the great things is track. And you bet it's great. Work speed. But football, and you know, this isn't anything against track coaches. They do a great job. They work on speed, acceleration, working. That's all terrific. But football is not about a 40-yard time. You've got to stop, change direction, move, react, impact, get through that. And these kids don't work deceleration for most. And again, got some. There's always exceptions. So I don't want to hear. I've, I've got some of you that. Well, I'm a track coach, and I do. That. That's great. And yeah. you implement some deceleration. Awesome. But most of them don't do it. And because we know it, because we'll see kids that finish up track that were great movers during football season. They start our first week of conditioning. We're doing agility, stop, change of direction movements, and they're overshooting targets. They can't get the slow big kid is making cuts and moves on my fast kids out there because they haven't done deceleration for months. You've got to get into it. Do that doesn't mean every day you've got to work that, but boy, if you're doing track, great, but get some stop drills, do some back pedal drills, do some stop lateral movement drills, hit that position. Yeah, work move. laterally. you got to get that. It's very linear. Um, and I've had kids in the past where they've gone to track and it, from a, you know, work capacity conditioning standpoint and their speed, uh, a lot of good things happen there. So yeah. the, the coaches do a lot of great things there. They can delve into it and really narrow the lens to be very specific on that. But definitely like my dad's saying, you got to focus on the breaks and make sure you're you're working on those because that's your injury prevention. That's also what's going to get you to reaccelerate and be quick. Um, but outside of that, kid, I've had kids and now they have started to realize over the past year or couple years is that uh, – you know, if they're going in a the track, they're going to have to realize that they're going to have to make their own time. We get about 30 minutes in the weight room time. We get 30 minutes on the field, 30 minutes in the weight room twice a week. That's not a lot of time for these guys that are trying to build strength, size, and power. So now these kids are realizing I got a couple that are going to start having to come in three day or a couple days a week in the mornings and then the normal two after school. So they're having to up their volume if they want to keep up with it because they realized last year, the two days of 30 minutes, I had kids losing strength pretty rough and, uh, they had to try to rebuild that in the summer before football. So we just want to keep stepping forward. So Yeah, and those just, are basketball and football, yeah. both of you are going in for the fall. Those guys want to try and put some weight on, and then they want you in a five-week period to do it. Yeah. You can't. Right now, you've got to be thinking. If you're thinking about your fall sport and getting some size on you, the other part we haven't even talked about yet is your nutrition. And how many of you guys actually pay attention to that? You know, we've got, I'll put a link down again below. Some of you have already done that. You know, we've had great response on that. But our fuel chart. You know, write down right now today what you tip, what you're going to eat, everything that goes in your mouth. That morning, breakfast, lunch, snack, drinks, I don't care what it is, put it down there. Then take our nutritional guideline we've got down there and do some comparison. You know, so when we get that and you fill it out, you go to calorieking.com, put in there, I had a 
tuna sandwich, I had a pop tart, I had a corn dog, whatever it is, it'll give you an idea. It'll tell you calories, carbohydrates, and fat. Number one, are you getting enough calories throughout the entire day? Are you getting enough protein? Are you getting enough water? Are you, how are these calories spread out throughout the day? What are the times of day on the chart it says that you were actually getting those meals? Uh, get the big picture of what's happening. Because if you're waiting for four to six weeks before football or basketball to now get serious about getting bigger, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, you'll gain strength, you bet, in five to six weeks. But right now... The size you, and all that takes Yeah, you've time. got seven months yeah. to get it. Imagine what happens when you get it set up. And, and I think a big part is that those junior high kids that have been playing maybe junior high ball or youth football and all and get out there that weigh 110 pounds and they want to play high school ball, and now they're going against some guys that are twice their body weight, you know, they, and they don't think about it until summer conditioning. Well, now summer conditioning, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Great. Yeah. It's not going to be enough time. You, yeah. you can't do it. You have to set it up on a bigger picture. And like everybody else says, if you listen to Lee Taft and, and Bobby Smith and the other guys that have done ours, Joe Conley has been in the past stuff from ASU. This is a process that takes time to do it. And I can tell you as an old guy, time goes much faster later on. But as a kid, you think you always have time. I can get there. I've got summer. It's okay. I can do it. No, start right now. If you want to be there, you want to get better. It starts right now today. You figure it out. And there's enough resource. If you're following this and listening, you know you got two resources right here you can reach out to that at any time. You can email us, call us, tag us, put something on. We'll be glad to help you. But don't wait until what I like all those guys that come in in July or getting ready to start August training and, and now I, I want to get ready. Yeah. Well, yeah. Great. That's awesome. But where have you been the last six months, seven months? So be that athlete that's really going through it. That doesn't mean all of you guys are going to be able to put the weight on you want because some of you don't have the testosterone levels, your body's not ready, but you can sure gain strength, power, and speed and have the advantage of some of those guys that maybe are bigger. But I can tell you durable. I can think of one, uh, Jacob won't mind me bringing him out, Jacob Demba years ago. Little guy always, but I tell you, he was durable. He was strong. He'd do anything I asked him to do. And he was getting pounded from just being a 145-pound guy with these 200-pound guys. He was making great cuts, great speed. They were just smashing against his body. But he was durable. He could handle the stress. So, yes, he didn't have the size, but he ate right. He worked out hard, had the ethic, the work drive to go after it, move, did what we asked him to do. And man, he could play ball and went through it and he handled great. And I still watch some of the stuff he's putting out there. He's still working hard and making cuts and doing really well. So, you know, you guys can do it. Doesn't mean, well, I, I'm not going to be 200 pounds, so I can't do it. No, be strong, be durable, eat right, be ready. Your body will be able to handle the stress of the sport. Yeah. And then when your body's ready to go put on some meat, great. It'll be there because you've already got the great habits. Then you're going to be amazed when that next year comes back and you haven't seen your grandma in a year or something comes up. She's going, holy cow, who's this extra 30 pounds on this guy? Where'd it come from? So establish it. Set those down so you can do it. Like we talked about before is just that uh, consistency breeds success. But being consistent, good, positive work is what breeds success. Yeah, not I think just that was like Coach Lenskin out. posted the other day. Uh, so that was a that was a good little comment he made yeah, on that. Definitely. What was that consistent effort? Consistent. Yeah, see, I think that's training, great right. yeah. success, something like that. Yeah. Uh, good, good topics there. Good points. Um, yeah, I think that's huge. Kids just if they can just stay consistent. I I heard from another kid at our school the other day, and uh, he plays ball for us and this and that. But he uh, he's never been a starter or this and that. He's always been just kind of okay being on the team more so. I, I'd say by his mindset and how he. Uh, applies himself and uh sadly i heard the other day that he said well i don't know well, why would i come in the weight room these guys are way stronger than me and even if i work hard right now i'm not gonna be anywhere near them and i think that's just a terrible mindset to have yeah. you know if you're not good then all you can do is work to get better at least you, you may not be where they're at but they've been putting in a lot more work but at least if you're here you can be right here and if you do that over a period of time someday you can be there but you can't defeat yourself before you even get there. You've got to give yourself a fighting shot and you've got to get after it. So I think people just need to know that, you know, not everybody was blessed with great genetics. Some people have to work harder than others. But I, I got some kids that, uh, we were. you know, they did not have the genetics. And yeah. now they have worked their tail off and created success in athletics for them. You know, so, I mean, you can have a whole different view on your life once you change high school just by putting in that work, you know, from your 
let's say popularity, the friends you hang around or your prowess or what people think of you um, or what you create from yourself just by working on yourself. So Yeah. And you have to, you got to put that time in, but you got to, you know, this whole thing of I can't get there or it takes too long. It's not easy. It's not going to happen. You know, and then nobody's saying it's an easy process. You go through and do it and you're guaranteed results, but we can guarantee if you're not going to put the work in, you bet you're not going to get better either. So put it in, but we challenge you right now to take a look. If you're in your off season or when you get to that, if you're just finishing up basketball or whatever, your off season's coming. Take a look. If you haven't already done that, we talked to, you know, a couple well, a month ago, I guess, about goals and figuring out the new year. But if you put some ahead of time for the season you're currently in or the one you just finished, what were those goals? Did you achieve those goals or not? And if not, well, what do you need to do to actually get there? Figure those things out. But that's what you need to start addressing right now. When you start your off-season training, figure out your weak spots that you're after. If you already have great 40 speed, that doesn't mean we don't want to keep working on getting faster. But boy, you know, I, I overran a lot of targets. Well, great. Doesn't mean I want to go slower so I can make the adjustments, but let's work on decelerating. Let's work on hard stops and change the direction of movement. That's one of your goals you need to work on. I need to put on some size. Great. What did you have for breakfast this morning or last night for dinner? Or lunch. If it's the evening and you're watching this, have you already had your four meals before you get to dinner time? You know, ask these basic questions. If not, do something about it. But get started with it right now and figure that that part out of it. Or like I said, comment on this below, whether you're seeing it on Facebook or YouTube or iTunes, wherever you've got the information. Just make sure that you let us know or ask questions uh, right there as well. VSOA podcast at gmail.com. We'll be glad to answer the questions and help you out. Doesn't matter if you're not in our area or not. We want to help you. We want to help you get going. If you're a coach that's on that process and trying to think about it and not sure where to start, hey, we've got a lot of resources we've had for you between, you know, like I said, we've already talked about Joe Conley and, and Bobby Smith and Lee Taft and ourselves. And so there's plenty of them out there. There's no reason you can't find it. Uh, so let us know what we can do to help you with that process. But you've got to think about off season now and get going on it. Definitely. Good, Good stuff. Yeah. Got anything for them? All right, guys, appreciate all of your, you know, the comments and things we've been getting, the emails we've been getting about things as well. Uh, the ACL injury prevention, we appreciate that. That feedback is on that too. Uh, I want to keep you safe, keep you going, but ultimately you guys are in charge of that. Parents and you putting out the right kind of foundation, helping them with that as well, not allowing the excuses, helping them figure it out. Uh, I can just think back with dad from just basic stuff of asking a question would always tell us to look it up, which that day is we had to get the encyclopedia out and look through. We didn't just Google on the phone, but don't just give them the answers and find through. Help them work through the process, but get them working and realizing, yeah, you've got to work towards those goals and find it. And uh, you don't just get it because you wish and you want it there. Um, it'll, you'll appreciate it much more once you get it, if you've worked hard for it. So, uh, thanks again. Uh, make sure you've hit the bell notifications. You've already subscribed to it. Look for some of the videos we've got coming up. Bobby and I are going to put some videos on this week, um, for you guys on Instagram and Twitter and everything. So let us know. We can keep going. You guys have a fantastic weekend and, uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Thanks.